Today we're going to put in an RPZ valve. This is an irrigation pipe that goes outside and we don't want the water to get contaminated. So we're going to put in that RPZ valve. In preparation for this we've moved that electrical outlet out of the way and you can tell that the pipe is under stress there. When it was put in it was kind of angled and forced into position. We're going to fix all of that. Here we have everything that we think we're going to need. There's the valve itself, couplers on there, elbows. We're also going to have to secure it. It's very heavy. First thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the pipe in preparation. And we've already shut the water off, so let's go do that. There's some water remaining in the pipe. We expect a little bit of water coming out. So there we've got it separated and the remainder of the water is going to leak out. Okay, so we've uh, cut our pipes and dry fitted. This is approximately what the thing's going to look like when it's assembled. We're going to start gluing the pieces together and then uh, making adjustments as we need to. Make sure that when you do this, you leave enough room for the clearance. The reason that pipe goes up so much after the RPZ valve is because we need to have 12 inches of clearance above the ports. You also need to have 3 inches on one side of the valve, 18 inches on the other side where the shutoffs are. Your valve may be different, so make sure that you're following the instructions of the RPZ valve. Now we've got PVC here, and so we've got to glue this stuff together to assemble it. Make sure you use appropriate uh, PVC primer and glue to get this done. We're using OD Purple Primer and Fold on 700 PVC glue. It doesn't have to be the same company. Alright, so here we have glued one elbow, a little piece that connects it to the thread on and a piece of pipe that goes up vertically also the thread on the other side. The reason that uh, we've stopped at this point is because we need more precise measurements. The adjustment of those angles, the length of that pipe is going to take some finessing. So we need to make sure that uh, this piece is in place and uh, very well attached before we do the rest of it. Make sure to use Teflon tape on any and all screw-on connections, putting it in the direction of the thread. The next thing we do is we attach this plastic line which is going to support our RPZ valve and attach it to the rafters. We we'll only attach it on one side, we don't know exactly how long to make it. We'll do the other side once the valve is in place. Alright, so now we want to attach the valve to the union on the supply side. Now we've measured out where we need to attach the other side of our plastic harness. The union on the inside is uh, attached and then on the output side it also needs to be attached. That's what we'll do next. So that's how it looks attached to the harness. Here we go, we'll attach the union. So now we're in a position to more precisely dry fit and measure the length of the pipe, adjust the angles of these 90s exactly where we want it to be. We'll glue this part first, then we'll glue this assembled piece. This way we can adjust the angle as we're gluing. Cut that off right about there. This is still dry fitted. We'll make final adjustments once that's cut just to make sure we don't make any mistakes. So now we have only one more connection left to make. To make sure it's a good one, we've disconnected this union here so we can give it a twist when we glue these two pieces together. Now we've reconnected the union and the whole setup is done. What we do need to do though before we turn on the water is take out our PZ valve, flush the system and just clear the system of any sediment and then we can put it back in. You can now turn on the water by opening up this spigot right here. Make sure that this test port is closed so the water doesn't come up shooting up the top. There it is, the entire setup. The RPZ valve union has been reconnected. We put in this RPZ valve where we already had a sump well. And in case there is a discharge from the RPZ valve, we have a well and a pump that will take up all that water. Now make sure that ports number two, number three and number four are closed and open up the water. See a little discharge there and that's normal. Now we want to flush the water and we'll just do them one at a time. The air is out. Now we can open up the out port and we're done.